unmute my microphone so I can be talking. Here we go. Hey everyone, Final Cut Pro Radio TV Live. We have a very special event today. Oh, I have to, let me just do that and do that. There we go. I'm just muting the, the web browser because it's echoing back in my ear and I can't have that. Let me see what we have here. So we have a we have a couple of guests today. The main guest is Nuno Bernardo. He is going to be coming on in a few minutes. We're going to be talking about the film that he did that's just coming out now called Gabriel that he edited in Final Cut Pro. But before that, we're going to bring on another guest. Let me get his name up there. Nick Alexander. Hey, Nick. Say hi to the audience. Now, people are wondering, what are you doing here? So first, give us a little bit of your background. Oh, your first documentary, that's pretty cool. So you like Final Cut then? What convinced you? Programs, but for Final Cut for um, editing, I think probably the one of the reasons was the magnetic timeline. It it took some time for me to really understand coming from uh, Premiere, but once I got the handle of it, I really saw the benefits of it. And of course, there's tons of other um, you know, reasons why I switched to Final Cut, but primarily the magnetic timeline and just the efficiency in Final Cut. Right. So you got an email from me this morning. Yes, I did get an email from you this morning <laughs> at a very <laughs> ungodly hour for Oregon time, but a very, a very good email. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I get up early. I get up... Uh... Oh, man, I don't even know what time. It's 4.30, something like that? Yep, yep. I was actually editing my movie at that hour. Oh, Oregon. you were? Yes, I was. But, you know, you do what you got to do. <laughs> and so what did the email say? The email said, congratulations, you have won a free pass to the Creative Summit. <laughs> and you, <laughs> this will be your first time, huh? Yeah, I, uh, I'm just super excited to go. I had gone to NAB two years ago where I met you. I met a lot of the Final Cut community. Sure. Really felt um, like that was worth the investment of my time um, you know, to connect, network. And uh, yeah, with the Creative Summit coming up, I just I feel like it's going to be even a more intimate experience in the sense of um, there's not all the hula baloo with the crowds and the, you know, the different exhibits. So I'm really excited just to hone in, um, you know, re reconnect with uh, the, the Final Cut community and also, you know, learn a little bit. And of course, going to the Spaceship Campus is pretty awesome. <laughs> well, that, yeah, I'm excited about that. We went to the uh, Visitor Center last year and yeah. that was pretty cool, but I didn't want to go to that two years in a row. That wouldn't make any sense. <laughs> Definitely not. <laughs> so are you using the latest version of Final Cut? Yeah, I just updated, I think it was earlier this week, um, got the news and um, yeah, started, uh, I mean, I think, you know, I, as far as I can see, I'm noticing using um, the newest uh, point update, a few, you know, the differences and use my app, iPad the other day as well, just to try out Sidecar. Yeah, I haven't, you're braver than me. I haven't updated Catalina yet. I'll, I'll wait till the <laughs> spring probably. 
Yeah. Maybe I'll go earlier on my MacBook, but not my main machine. I'm not going to do that. Yeah. I just updated to Mojave, I think, May after after NAB. So. Yeah. Little by little. I, I totally understand that. So how can people contact you on to congratulate you on Twitter? Absolutely. Um, you can find me, Nick A. Films, uh, Nick Alexander, Nick A. Films on Twitter. And yeah, for everyone that's going to the Creative Summit, uh, I'm excited to meet you, reconnect, and uh, yeah, spend a few days together um, talking about our favorite editing software. <laughs> Absolutely. Three days. Motion and Final Cut for three days. This is the, this is the biggest <laughs> event, Final Cut Pro event in the world. Yeah. It's it is. Yeah. I mean, pe you know, there's other events, but like NAB is Black Magic, and it's all these cameras, and it's like a lot of circus activity. But this is just Final Cut. I know you're staying at the Juniper with the rest of us. Yeah, that's my plan. I'm I'm really excited to to go and yeah, just really hone in on Final Cut. Um, I think this is going to be a great experience for me, especially for my first time. Yep. Very good. <laughs> Thank you, Nick. I have one more announcement. And then we're going to bring Nuno on. Let me just do this. Here we go. One more announcement for tomorrow's show while well, I got everybody here. So go to the FCPX Creative Summit. Don't forget to go there because that's who sponsors this giveaway that Nick got. Don't forget. FCPX Creative Summit. You're running out of time. You've got to get over there. FCPXCreativeSummit.com. That's important. They're doing great. They always do. They do a great job. It's fantastic. Now, here's one more thing for tomorrow's show. Michael Cioni. He'll be on tomorrow at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific on Final Cut Pro radio tv live so that's pretty cool everybody knows who michael is i'm sure and now i'm going to bring on the guest of this episode of final cut pro radio tv mr nuno bernardo oh, i'm sorry that's nicholas sorry let me get him off there <laughs> nuno <laughs> sorry there we go. There we go. Switching problems. There we go. Nuno, how you doing? Good, good, good. It's been a while since I talked to you. Yeah, uh, a few months, probably a year by now. I think it's been a year because I think yeah. it was 68. Yeah. Let me just see if I got this right. There's your lower third. I but I got let make lower thirds ahead of time and then I'd put them on and rearrange them depending on who I have on screen. So, you have been a busy fellow with making this film, <laughs> Gabriel, right? Yes, uh, we um, we finished post production. Uh, we released in in cinemas in Portugal uh, last March, and um, it was released in more than thirty screens. Uh, so it was um, it was a moderate success. It was not you always expect to. To have more people watching your your work, but um, it's moderate. It's still on the top ten local movies, so it's uh, it did well locally. It was released on on video on demand on the on the different platforms, and, and now he's starting his international career, uh, and it will open in in Los Angeles on November eighth, and then in uh, in the UK and uh, Ireland on November fifteenth, and from there we hope to open in other countries and territories. Oh, that's excellent. I mean, I'm going to watch it when it comes out. I've talked to you so much about it. Yes. <laughs> I'll probably send you a DVD uh, with English subtitles uh, ahead of time so you can, can watch the Oh, that would be fantastic. Yeah. Uh, because so our release in the U.S. is very limited, uh, as you may expect, for a um, foreign language independent movie. It's very hard to open in, 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 in the U.S. Is it really? Yeah, <laughs> even even with Netflix, I mean, I, I go on Netflix all the time. No, but we are, we are opening in, in cinema, so it's it's. Um, I see. We are doing the, the the traditional route to open in cinemas, and then in uh, February uh, 2020, then it will be available on iTunes, Amazon, and all those platforms. And where do you think in the United States has it has it? Uh, so it's coming out November the sixth in the U.S. Uh, November the eighth. 
No, New November York. the 8th. Yes. And how many theaters in the U.S.? Uh, it will be only in, in uh, Los Angeles. Um, okay. In one, in, in one cinema. We are targeting, of course, the... Um, the Portuguese community that lives in LA and lives in the US. And uh, we are also, because it's a, a boxing movie, it's about boxing, uh, we are also targeting uh, boxing communities and people that like, in one hand, independent movies and foreign European independent movies, but in the other hand, people that like boxing. So hopefully we can have, um, we have four, sesh, uh, four screenings per day. So hopefully we, we, we can gather a few hundred people to, to see our work. Absolutely. That'd be fantastic. So you directed and uh, wrote. I, I wrote and directed the, the, the film. Okay. And you and the, your editors used Final Cut. Yes. We, um, over the last, uh, I think the first time I was in your show was because we, we just made the, the switch from um, Final Cut 7 to X uh, when we edit um, a documentary um, about stand-up comedy. And it was the first uh, big project that we did on Final Cut X. It was 2014, I think. Um, and since then, we've been doing um, primetime television series. We've been doing uh, films, documentaries, uh, and also TV magazine type of work, all edited in Final Cut X. Well, wait a minute. You, you, can't, you can't edit films in Final Cut Pro 10. You can't edit anything in Final Cut. <laughs> well, that, that's what some people say. You can't edit films in 10. You can't do TV shows in 10. You, of course if, you can. We know you can, but other people say. And, uh, it, I, the fact is, you can. Uh, of course, if, I think I explained it before to other people, is that when you have a small company or, uh, or when you are... Um, in, a, in, a, in a small group, it's easy for you to adapt and implement the best workflow as possible. When you are in a big machine that you have um, a workflow that was established years ago and everything works, there is no motivation to break what is working. So I think it's 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 easy. And, and, and the fact, and I keep, I keep reading and, and, and seeing other people talking about it, the fact that in, in, in Europe uh, um, we have more Final Cut Pro X productions that, for example, in the US is the fact that we have smaller production companies, we have more independent production companies, and because of the size and because of the type of work that we do, we are able to adapt. And when you are able to adapt, of course, you try to get, to get the best workflow as possible. Uh, and this is why I think most of the people uh, try to move to Final Cut Pro X because of the flexibility of the speed and I think all the, the advantage that we've been talking about in your, in your podcast. Absolutely. So one of the things with 10 is, let me think, it, we just got 10.4.7, 10.4.7 with the new metal update. Have you updated to that? No, not yet. Uh, we, um, uh, we, we usually update because our year usually goes until beginning of December. So okay. usually December and January is the, the month that we used to update the machines in both operating system. We, we have some computers still working on um, the one before Mojave. So we have some computers in Mojave and others in, I think, um, High Sierra, or I just, just don't remember the name of the, uh, of the operating system. So we that have sounds right. uh, the, the, the previous version. Uh, so two versions. Um, Ago and uh, when we don't update Final Cut during during productions, only uh, when we finish our season, that usually is the use the, the months of December and January to update our machines. Then we update operating system if it is stable. Hopefully, uh, Catalina will be stable by then. Hopefully, uh, yeah. <laughs> and new versions of Final Cut and also new versions of uh, plugins and um, and also the. Um, the, the, the black magic the DaVinci resolve that we are being using more and more to to finish working and for deliveries so what did you learn from Gabriel that you do differently now when you do films I we I want to believe that we have a very solid workflow uh, because we we implemented um, from from the the, the, the shooting um, we have um, uh, tools uh, and we have uh, this this, this uh, app called Movie Slate uh, that works on iPad that syncs time code with audio and cameras so we we we. We get all the metadata as a file, not as as as, as paper. So we we've been a, 
perfecting this this, this workflow where we, we we take care of all the stages from the beginning and then of course all the metadata all the information uh, is being transferred for final cut so for us it's it, 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 it's amazing because when um, in the end of each day all the footage is logged all the circle takes that are the takes the director if it is me that i selected as the best takes um all the the the, the, the shots are organized by if it is a wide shot if it is a close-up so all that information goes directly to the editor and um and makes his job really easier easy and and makes us way faster to edit because nowadays especially when we do television your 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 turnaround times are very 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 small, so you need to to be really able to deliver as fast as you can. For example, for Gabriel, uh, we end up shooting in um, end of March, and we already had a a screening for the distributor booked for the beginning of June. So basically, we had uh, less than two months for going from the um, end of shooting to having a um, almost finished version of the of the feature film so you need to to save time and of course you need to save costs because then sure. the budgets are going always getting smaller and smaller so you need at least to save time and and try to do all these small tricks that allow you to um to make the editor's job as easy as possible so you were the director and writer on gabriel do you do you edit as well Video? No, I don't. I don't. I sit with uh, with the editor, but I I don't edit um, uh, because you need you, you need you need um, another uh, pair of eyes. You need someone that um, to do that work for you because otherwise you'll be so close to the material that probably you will not uh, you'll not do a good a good sure. job. Sure. So that's interesting. Are you the one that started using Final Cut Pro Ten? Yes, I, I started using uh, in the in the company. I I started using it for like personal projects, family films, and um, uh, and I, I think I told that story in in one of the previous episodes. I was at the time um, working with uh, with the editor in another feature film, and during the day uh, he, I was sitting in the editing room with the editor, and he was using Final Cut Seven. Uh, and uh, at night when I got home, I was using Final Cut uh, Pro X to do some personal projects. And then I, I was started getting frustrated because something that on X took me like a keystroke or a mouse click. Sure, sure. And I was sitting next to editor the next day, uh, and it, when he was using uh, Final Cut Seven, it took like three or four steps to achieve the same goal. And then I realized something is wrong here. Uh, we need to have another look on on Final Cut X. And then I think it took us one more year until we we start to adopt in one project, and then another year I think in. Since 2015, all our projects are done uh, in, in Final Cut Pro X. So what I'm curious about is normally when I hear these stories, it's because the editor chose Final Cut Pro 10. But you didn't, you're not the editor, you're the director and writer, and you still chose it. Y yes, because it's... It um it would have because i'm also the, 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 a partner in the company so i have a say on the on the workflow and, uh, and the systems that we use and then because in the end of the day we want to, to, to deliver the best um, um the best work as possible for spending the, the, the least amount of, of time possible meaning that spending the um saving costs as, as uh, wherever possible so that's that's why we swap and we we were on that i think all the production post-production and production companies i think in 2014 15 some of them even 2016 they were on these crossroads what should we do because final cut pro 7 was getting obsolete and uh, at the time there was three options one was going Avid, and we bought license for Avid, or going um, Premiere, um, or going X. And uh, and at the time, I remember myself and uh, the editors of the company, we test all the platforms. And uh, I think Avid was a known uh, a no-go. Um, and then the, 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 the choice was between Premiere and uh, the X, but then uh, everybody that, tex, uh, that tested X uh, prefer X uh, instead of Premiere. So I had, I had Michael Yanovich on a couple episodes ago. He's a 25 plus year avid editor and he switched to Final Cut Pro 10. And one, finally, 
finally a <laughs> bell went off in my head when he said, when I always ask people, well, why, why do people choose 10? Why do people choose Avid? And he said, the reason people stick with Avid is because on Avid, I can do, I can have 10 editors working together. I can have color, colorists working together. I can have visual effects. You can have 15 or 20 people working on the same project. When you get to that level of people working on the same project, it's, it's kind of on the same time. It's not exactly at the same time, but it's kind of like on the same time. That I understand. That would be a nightmare with Final Cut Pro 10 at this point. At this point, I, I, I don't. I don't think it will be. We we we've been producing for the last. This is our fourth year. We produce a weekly a weekly magazine, uh, okay. like a, a TV show that we we have to deliver. We have to shoot, edit, grade the audio post production every single week or thirty five weeks uh, of um, in one year. So it, as you may imagine, it's the, the, it's a very short turnaround between you. You, you you plan you shoot and then sure. you edit and do all the all the steps and uh, we have a, a, a team of three editors sometimes four editors full time working on um, on a, on a shared environment um, so you can do that you just do it in a different way uh, okay. with Avid there's a way that has been working I don't know for twenty years and everybody's yes. used to that yes, and it, exactly. it just works. Uh, yep. So there is no incentive to, for you to change, uh, but I think you, you you can achieve the same level. Uh, in, in although we never tried because for us we don't see it as as, as an editing platform yet. With DaVinci, you can do the same type of work, and with Final Cut, the way we do it, where we have shared uh, shared um, the the footage is shared um, between all the editors, and they exchange XML and they exchange uh, timelines. It works. It, it, we, we never slow down because okay. Final Cut doesn't have the same features as, as, as Avid. We have other features. And in the gotcha. end of the day, it it works the same way because what you want is to edit something and share with your colleague or import other people's work into your timeline and have uh, the main editor compiling all the different small parts, small edits in, in, in the main show. So I think in terms of speed and performance and and and, and re, uh, reliability and uh, i think it's 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 the same it's just that one system has been there for 20 years and everybody learned using that system and everybody's comfortable with that system and the other system is being there for four or five and people are still adapting and people are still improving and i am very curious um because i think the guys from that do edge edge for mac Yes. That is a tool that we use for, for backing up the cards from the cameras. I think they bought uh, one of these... Um, yes, procedures. Yeah, yes. They, they, they bought some platform and they, they have been teasing, saying that they will, very soon they will come up with a solution for, uh, for, 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 for teams of editors for sharing uh, um, timelines or doing bin locking or whatever. It's, 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 it's the solution. Um, but you can do it now. We've been doing this for five years, and I think other companies uh, with with the LumaForge, they've been doing the share share storage, and they've been right, doing this, right. this network. And and and, and I, I see some of the case studies. There is broadcasters in Europe that have like 40, 50, 60 seats of Final Cut, and all of them are do, working in in. Um, in a, in, a, in a network environment and all of them share footage, share timelines, share materials, share edits. It's just in a different way. It's yes. not called bid locking. Uh, but I think it, it in the end of the day, it's what makes it better and faster. And people are saying that Final Cut maybe is going to be doing some collaboration coming up? We're all... <laughs> people are hoping, yeah. Yes, but... Uh, it never it never stop us down to doing collaborations meaning that we are doing that uh, of course probably there will be more efficient ways to do it uh, but we never got slowed down because it doesn't have been locking uh, because you edit something worst case scenario you export an xml and it takes 10 seconds right, for, the, right. for the other editor to import that xml that will not be very different from one editor release 
bin and other editor and call the other the other editor and say you can open the bin now and the other editor opens and locks the bin so it's just a different way it is a different way and i always i always tease avid editors i said it's the way you guys notify each other it's like sneaker net from the 1990s you got to go up and poke somebody hey can you release that bin you got to call them on the phone you got to go to their place, you got to send them an IM. Why isn't it built into the Avid application itself where you can just message somebody? Never understood that. But um, of course, anything that helps and, and, and makes collaboration easier, faster, and more reliable, it will be great. Well, here's the thing. So when Final Cut Pro 10.0 came out, they had nine updates. 10.0.9 came out before 10.1 came out. Well, 10.4 came out two years ago, and now we're up to 10.4.7. We're getting into the same kind of thing where they're doing something more than just the usual update. They're doing something bigger because it's taking a long time to get from 10.4 to 10.5. Take It's getting a long time. We're up to 10.4.7. Two years will be the summit will be two years. Yeah. But so it, it's normal because in the beginning almost everything was lacking in the software right, and now right. and now i think everything is there um i know that people uh, i know that you still manage of, of a list of things that are missing or wishful uh features but if you look at the software as it is there's not in in, in 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 the big schema of course every person has different needs and every uh, editor has different needs and of course uh, one person may want this, other person may want that. But there is not big features that are lacking in the in, in the software. Um, uh, and I think the the one the two ones that are more discussed between uh, between pros are the the collaboration, of course, and uh, these endless discussions about the audio mixer. There's people that want an audio mixer. There's people <laughs> that don't want audio mixer. And... You know, when somebody doesn't want a feature, don't use it. Yeah, but but don't tell somebody else they can't get an exactly. audio mixer because you don't want one. Exactly. Just don't use it. That's yeah. all. But that, you know, I want everybody to get all the features that they possibly can get, that they can cram in there and still you know still make things work. I mean, they they updated ten four seven is a big update to Metal two, which everybody's saying they're seeing speed improvements. I updated on my laptop. I didn't update on my main machine yet, because I'm still one OS behind. I'm still on High Sierra on this machine, so. But I, I want, you know, another thing I want, I want colored markers. I want colored clips in the timeline. I want, you know, like you said, an audio mixer. There's all kinds of things. Of course, I have to mention dupe detection for Sean Lander. He's, yeah. he's <laughs> a, one of my friends from Australia. he got to talk about that. And, it, and you know, listen, we, we're going to the Final Cut Pro Creative Summit in t three weeks. We will get to talk directly, one-on-one, -on -one, to the Final Cut Pro Pro Apps team. We have two sessions with them. We have one at, they give a presentation, either at the new place or at One Infinite Loop, and we go there, we go into a theater, and they present the latest and greatest. And then they're coming back to the Juniper Hotel where we're staying, and they're going to do a one-on-one -on -one Q&A with us for an hour. That's on Saturday. And last year was the first year that they did that, and it was very successful. Very successful. You can submit questions ahead of time, 24 hours ahead of time. They answer some of those. You can ask live questions. They ask us questions as well. They that say, well, good. why why do you want this? Why do you want this specific feature? And you know, we go back and forth and they don't they don't give give away any secrets, but they still, you know, it's it's a very, very, very good reason to go to the Final Cut Pro Creative Summit yeah. if anybody's uh, still thinking about going there. I know we have a couple of my friends from Australia are coming over. Ian Anderson and Lee Herbert are coming over this year. They're both teaching sessions, so that's a long trip for them. I, don't, I think it's 24 hours or <laughs> some <laughs> nonsense going through customs and everything. Mm -hmm. But that's going to be good. That's uh, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday this year, November the 7th through the 9th. And here's the thing. Listen, nobody's... I don't have any inside information, but usually... The Final Cut Pro team has something new to show us at the summit. 1047 is not new. 1047 is from a few weeks ago. 
usually they have something brand new to show us at the summit. Now, in a pri and when 10.4 came out two years ago, they showed us 10.4. We could talk about it publicly, but it was not released yet. It was not released until December of that year, two months later. So I kind of expect the same kind of thing happening this year. I don't know for sure, but it seems logical that they will do the same thing. I will expect your videos to be updated, Richard. <laughs> <laughs> they will. I, I, I now have the live video up on fcpradio.com. You can go right there to um, the main page, and I'll keep up the live the latest live video is right there on the main page. Plus, you go on Twitter and you go on YouTube and you go on Facebook and and the Periscope. But if you go to fcpradio.com, let me just check and make sure it's there. Yep, it's right there. You are on the main page at fcpradio.com right now. So that's going to be one of the places that I'm going to be putting the video up each time. Because now I can schedule it 24 hours ahead of time, put the link up there. When we go live, it comes live. It's exciting times. I mean, yeah. I'm very excited with Final Cut Pro 10. 10.4.7 seems to be stable, uh, but I didn't update to Catalina yet, though. People maybe are having issues with that. I don't know. Some people I've seen reports of some issues with Catalina in 10.5. I don't know. There's there's always a, a few issues, a few things to be ironed in the in the first days and weeks of a new yeah people of a new release. I always say you you guys that do the the people that do the first day update for the OS and everything else is you're brave. You're <laughs> yes. pioneers. I'm glad you do Somebody, it. I'll see you in six someone months. Someone has to do it. Someone has to do it. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Well the thing is I have I have a MacBook Pro twenty nineteen. I just sold my twenty sixteen and I have that in the other room and I don't care about updating that. I just do a backup, I do a clone of my existing and then I'll try it. And if it doesn't work, I'll just reinstall the clone. I use carbon copy cloner or there's some other, another one that I use that clones everything. So, that's my strategy to first, I give I give it three or four weeks and then I install in the in the in the in the in the MacBook Pro and then if it is stable one month later then we start thinking about putting in the in the desktop and production machines. Yeah, I give it six months. That's, <laughs> you're braver than me. So when you were doing when you were filming Gabriel, did you did the actor he wasn't a boxer, right? No, he was not. Um, he never boxed on his life. <laughs> none of them, no, none of the two actors, because there's a, a big fight in the end, and none of the actors have ever uh, did boxing or fighting or anything. So they spend uh, more than two months doing um, um, two, three things. One was improve their... Um, their, 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 their the structure, the, the training, and, and 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 getting some muscle, and then the second was um, they went every morning to a boxing gym so they could feel the culture, and then and we didn't want them to learn how to box because what you see in films it's not real boxing because you you can't beat sure. the other person so everything is choreographed. Uh, choreographer so we need to um, they need to get the, the what is boxing about but i didn't want them to and it was the, the the stunt coordinator told us that that it's not good if they learn how to box because when they go to shoot they will fight for real and then you don't want that because they may they may hurt themselves so they went there they did some some boxing training but more important was how they can do the choreography and how can they do this in a very safe environment because it was like um, it was like a dance. We have um, we have a, a, a sequence in the end. It takes almost ten minutes, and then it, it was like uh, uh, set up and, and then the choreography of, of of a dance. Because we have the all the moves, all the steps, and they did that over and over and over and over and over again until it it, it got perfect and it, and it got believable. Because in the end, although everybody knows that they are not fighting for real. You want the audience to, for those 10 minutes, forgot uh, that and do the suspension of disbelief and, and a real embrace that uh, that real fight. And uh, when the reviews came out, when the critics uh, wrote about the film, I think uh, a common note was that the, the, the film, real, uh, film felt real and, and, and the fight sequences felt real. And that was the, the, the one of the biggest achievements that we wanted to have was to to do 
um, a fight, uh, a boxing sequence that, although it was not them fighting, but for the for the viewer, uh, it could feel it could feel real. Exactly. No, I, I agree. I, it, from the little clips that I've seen, it looks it looks real. It made me tense watching it, watching the guy, <laughs> watching Gabriel. Yeah, we, we have a few scenes that are a little violent and um, and all of them needed to be endless uh, rehearsals. Uh, because of that, we had a, a great um, stunt coordinator um, that's been working in this industry for like 20 years. And um, and we put safety first and I put safety first. And uh, and uh, we were lucky that both the actors and the team, um, they, they put an extra time and extra hours to make this right. So we had a comment on YouTube from Michael Roper. Hey, Michael, what you doing? He says, are you planning to release Gabriel online at some point, Netflix or whatever? Uh, Netflix doesn't depend on me, but it will be in all the uh, video on demand platforms, uh, iTunes, uh, Amazon, uh, all, all the ones that are transactional will be available um, end of January, beginning of February 2020, uh, worldwide. Um, okay. And then... Uh, if Net Netflix picks the film or Amazon Prime or Hulu or any other platforms, j just it's just on them. They 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 need to approach us and 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 acquire the rights for doing a global release. So first will be cinemas, then will be what is called transactional VOD. So it's when you go to a platform like iTunes or you go Amazon and you rent or you buy sure. the film, and then another wave will be um, the the the, the VOD platforms like like uh, Netflix. Gotcha. Now, are you? How are you projecting in the theaters? Is it, are uh, you doing DCPs? DCPs. Um, okay. That is, it's a it's a master for for cinemas. Um, so we do that uh, now. We are able to do it in house. We do it with DaVinci Resolve that allows you to create your own DCPs and all the deliveries. This is why we use most. Uh, we use. Um, Black Magic uh, Resolve most of the time for doing that, for doing the deliveries, because it does the um, the deliveries for the broadcast, doing the broadcast requirements and all the settings, and also allows you nowadays to do DCPs. That's interesting. So Resolve, you can, it's, it's pretty easy to do DCPs then from Resolve. It is as easy as doing Final Cut. It's just select. Well, you need to know what you're doing because yes, you need to you select do. the right options, but it's just um, drop down. You do the, the, the drop downs and then you, you pick the hard drive and you go and you ask a favor from one of your local cinemas and you test the, the, the hard drive. And if all goes well, then you send it to other places. So I thought prior in years past, you had to have a third party DCP piece of software. You don't need that anymore? Uh, no, because in, in the past, the, 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 the software um, in one hand was very, very expensive uh, and in the other hand was not as, as simple as pressing the buttons right but nowadays uh, i think two version two versions three versions uh, ago uh, resolve uh, implemented um, uh, dcp capabilities inside inside resolve so not only you can record but you can do a first uh, quality check because you can play back the dcp inside of into resolve okay uh, what is good so you can do a first test in your in your own um, uh, editing suite and then you go it's, it's always and we always do that we always go to to a local cinema to test in um, in uh, in um, in a real cinema see sure, if the, the sound is good the color is good. because then then it's a nightmare and, I, and i've been doing this having this experience because then when you you put in cinemas Every every projector, every screen has different settings, and uh, it's dark in one place. It's 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 too um, too bright in another place. I uh, for Gabriel, we, we we went to a screening where the the speaker, speakers on the left side of the screen didn't work. So although we have a 5.1 surround mix, wow. you can only wow. you can you can only hear from the right side. So it's then you don't control those, those 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 elements. No, absolutely. So when I, I have a recording studio and when I record a band, when I do the final mix, I listen on iPod, iPods. I listen in my car. I listen in my truck. Yes. I listen in my living room. I listen on my phone. I listen in mono yeah. on, a, on a cheap speaker. Because, I, but, but even so, but I think that there's some... 
so many variables uh, in, in, in project. I, last weekend, I went to see a film and I think there was a problem with the projector because the screening starts like 10 minutes later. And they forgot to change the lens because, you know, there's in, in cinema, you have the scope or you sure. have the 185 that is less scope. And the movie was 185, but they forgot to take the lens from the scope. So uh, the, 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 the image was really stretched. So the, the framing was all over the place because it was cutting big chunks of the screening. And if I was the director of that movie, I'll be really, really offended. But in, in the end, you can control these things. So you try to to do as many tests as you as you as you say because you test in a, in a, in, a, in a calibrated uh, a screen uh, monitor and then you go to a cinema and then we try to do the test screenings in different places but then in the end when you when you release a film in 30 40 50 screens in all over the country and sometimes in other countries you don't know what to, what's going to happen with your baby but uh, listen I had that exact experience. I went to see Mulholland Drive when it came out, David Lynch's film. Mm -hmm. And it was at the Charles Theater in Baltimore. And I had been waiting for it to come out, waiting. And they had the wrong lens on it. It was squeezed. Oh, it's even worse. I was so <laughs> mad. I just walked out and went to the booth and said, listen, if you're not going to correct this and start over again, I want my money back. Well, they did. They did correct it and start over and apologize, but there's no way I'm going to wait a, a film like that that I've been waiting for and waiting for and watch it and, and the squeeze, you know. It's the, you know it was just... Yeah, but, but but those times you had a projector in, projectionist in the room. Now you have no one. And, and, oh, and that's when true. I, that's true. When, when I go see Complain, uh, and there's always the, the manager of the day, that, uh, and you try to explain, okay, that you have the, the wrong lens or your surround sound is not working or your left speaker, and he or she looks at you and says, uh, they know right. nothing about surround sound, projection right. lines, and, and I think that is, a, that, that, that is a big problem because I grew up with cinema, with, 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 with film, not because I'm, I'm nostalgic about film, but the fact that you had someone that was the projectionist, that was a perfectionist, that take care that there was the right framing, the right curtains, and the, the sound was great, and it was taking care of that, and now you don't. It's like... Now it's like Russian roulette. You may have a good screening, and then the next one may be awful. Yeah. You know, this is why whenever I can, uh, I'll go IMAX because at, at IMAX there is some consistency sure. uh, uh, in terms of of the screenings. That I think they are more um, the cinemas that carry the IMAX screenings. They 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 need to follow more strict uh, rules, and you have a better experience. But the, the normal uh, digital screening, I, I've been having it all, and 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 it's awful because you you see less people going to this to 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 to, to cinema and preferring other forms of entertainment like um, stay home and watch Netflix or other right. platforms. Uh, you need the only thing that is different in cinema is because you have bigger screens, better screens, better quality, and if you can provide that, then it's 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 difficult to bring people back to to to, to cinemas. Well, you know what, I, I would, there's some films I want to see in the cinema and some films I'm satisfied with seeing on my big screen at home. But there's, mm -hmm. you know, like, you know, there's lots of films that I would go to see if the film, if the theater was quality and if it was fairly mm -hmm. close by. I'm not going to drive an hour to go see a film. Mm -hmm. They don't have I, I, I understand that, but I think I, I, um, I, I hear a lot of people saying the same thing. Okay, if the movie, if it is a big movie that has good special effects or the sound design is amazing it, it deserves to see to be seen in, in in cinema but i think all all the movies deserve because the experience of watching a movie with 50 100 200 other people is so different especially in the in comedy um uh, when oh, you're talking about comedy, yes I, I i before gabriel i directed a, a short film like a 20 something minutes short film and it was a comedy and um, and we, we, we finished, we added, uh, and it was ready, and we were presenting it to film festivals because in short films, there was no commercial value. So basically, you submit to film festivals, and that's the way that the, the short films get seen. So we, we were projecting it and, and, and screening to, 
festival programmers and people that decide which films. And the reception was not very good. And I was like, okay, shit, I made some bad movie here. People don't, don't like it. It's not being selected for festivals. And... Um, and then uh, one festival in New York picked the film and they and they screened in New York and it was a big cinema. It was like 500 people. And it was amazing because when you have a comedy in a, sc- in a cinema with 500 people laughing at the same time, the movie got alive. And, uh, and since that moment, uh, we've been screening this film around the world for the last two years. We got more than, I don't know, 15 awards. We've, we've been picked for like 50 festivals just because that movie got alive when it's seen by an audience. And I think most of the movies will will be different if you see them in a cinema with other people. Uh, if you see with the right image, with the right sound, really well framed, really well projected, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, the, 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 the cinema is all full, because even if it is a drama, even if it is a comedy or, or a, a scary movie, it will leave and the impact will cause on you will be very different than even if you have a big screen. No, uh, at I, no, I, I agree. I, I didn't just mean Star Wars and stuff. I meant yeah. like like I'm a big David Lynch fan. You know, I yeah. like Quentin Thank Tarantino. You. These people I would go see the, all the time in the, in the theaters if I could. And other films, too, like you said, uh, you know, a good comedy where people are going to be laughing with you. You know, like Rocky Horror, for example, the first time I saw that was in a theater. With people, you know, experiencing people and, and stuff, throwing water and popcorn, it's different than just watching it on a screen at home. Yes. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely, yeah. absolutely. I, I think the, the I think there's always going to be a place for theaters. Still, they just have to. Uh, I don't know. In my case, I don't have one that's that convenient, but I still to go see them. You know. I, I, I presume that, and, I, and it's a problem if if there's less cinemas in in, in um, outside the big cities, then people don't have any other option than to to watch them at home. But I, because I, I understand, and I watch Netflix and Amazon, HBO, and I think I subscribe to all of those services, right. and it's it, it, it's it's convenient to to be at home and and, and watch that. And uh, the fact that you you have your your need for stories is being served that way. Uh, I think that television and, and, and those platforms will never uh, satisfy that need that is this common experience of her sitting together and and, and, and watching the, that story playing in a, in a big screen. So you mentioned Luma Forge earlier. Did, do you have a jellyfish? Yes. Did you work with no, it? No, we don't. Um, we, we, we look at it um, um, a few times. Um, we, we got in touch with um, the representatives for Spain and Portugal out of Madrid, but we never we never finished. We have um, like a homemade solution. We, we have right. one of those um, network atta- attach uh, servers um, that works that way. And uh, uh, it's not as fast as, 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 as a LumaForge, but it it's, uh, solves our needs. Um, so For the then, time being, right. I, I can't wait till I get one of those. I don't need it right now. I'm just working by myself, so I don't need a network <laughs> with a bunch yeah. of editors. Yeah. But I think that will be probably the next step because what uh, we, we we do HD and for HD, uh, uh, one gigabit inter- uh, Ethernet is more than enough. Uh, and the system that we have allows us to have like 200, megabyte, uh, 200 megabits per second, uh, megabytes per second in terms of speed. So it's more than enough for HD footage and to, to have several uh, editors um, working on that. But if we in the future, and, and I think everybody is preparing that migration for 4K, when we start editing 4K, probably we have to look at uh, one of these LumaForge because then we need to have 10 gigabit. We need to have sure. a more um, faster and more a more stable. When you're talking about HD, we didn't feel the need uh, for that because the solution that we have in house is still still works. It's it doesn't have a bottleneck uh, uh, at the moment. So we have, we can have four editors. Sometimes we have six editors using the same um, array and uh, everybody works really fast. So speaking of 10 gig ethernet, did you see the Mac Pro has two of them? Yeah. (laughs) Are you getting Uh, a Mac Pro? Probably not. Um, uh, Believe it or not, we we are still using... um, 2009 
Mac, MacBook Pro, uh, Mac Pros that were upgraded for 2012 specs that were upgraded in RAM, uh, then with SSDs and then with new graphic cards. And they work as fast as, as we need them to do. So we still have a few of them and um, we have a few iMacs and, and MacBook Pros. So in, on spec, it's a great machine. Uh, we don't have the need for it right, right now. Uh, it's, it's not for everybody, for sure. It's just I, th I, th I think we will be, uh, uh, as I mentioned, uh, at least for television, we're still working in, 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 in HD. On film, we still do 2K. We don't do 4K on film. Right. Uh, I believe that if we we have the um, if we have to do the switch, and I think we'll have to do the switch. I don't know if it is next year or in two or three years time when we right. switch from HD to 4K post production. Then we will probably need a Mac Pro or a new version of the iMac Pro that will sure. have it is because the machines that we have, I don't think they can we can squeeze anything else right. out of yeah. them because they are 10 years old. Exactly. <laughs> It was funny when before the Mac Pro was announced, people were saying, we want a Mac Pro, we want a Mac Pro, we want a Mac Pro. And then when it came out, they said, oh, wait a minute, this is too pro. We don't want something this professional. We don't want eight PCIe slots. That's too much. We only wanted four. I, I, well, I remember when, um, I think we had an article on fcp.co um, a year ago. And, uh, uh, we were in the middle of the production and, and, and someone from Apple read the article and called us to say, to thank for the article because, we, not because we had any, we just told the truth and the fact that we use sure. Final Cut and we use Apple, um, uh, Final Cut was portrayed in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a nice way. So we got a call from someone at Apple and they want to know more about the company, what, what we were using. And I, and they were, they asked which, which machines that we were using. And, and we said, uh, I'm a little embarrassed to say, but we still have both computers, but it's your fault because you make them so well that there is no need for us to, exactly. to, to, well, to swap them. I agree. Yeah. I, I have an old Mac Pro down in my recording studio because all my audio gear is set up around, based around that Mac Pro. And I updated the OS as much as I could and updated the software as much as I could. And it works. I use it just for audio ingest, though. I can record mm -hmm. 24 tracks of 24-bit audio without any problem. Yeah. I don't do any editing on it. Uh, we have a few iMacs that are that are down the line. I think they they are not aging as well as the Mac Pro because on the Mac Pro, even being an older machine, you can upgrade all, almost all the elements. Uh, so the, the the first to go will be the iMacs, and then probably we'll swap the Mac Pros with better iMacs or iMac Pros, or uh, we have to look at uh, the new Mac Pro. Exactly. All righty, so. Is there anything else we want? Well, let's talk about where you can see Gabriel, where you can find out yes. more. Yes, uh, we have a website um, where we post all the information and then we'll have screening times and the list of cinemas that we'll have uh, Gabriel. Um, the URL is gabriel.movie. Uh, so it's simple to memorize, gabriel.movie. Uh, you, you can go there and um, and probably move closer to the, um, to the, the, to the premiere in the in, in, in LA, we, I can send an email and we can offer some tickets for your uh, okay. listeners in, in the um, Los Angeles area and we can host some of them you know, in, in one of our screenings on the, um, November 8th or November 9th in, uh, in LA. Um, it will be in, the, in Beverly Hills in the Music Hall Cinema. So, um, but I can talk to you later and then um, sure. you, on the week before you can, you can do some sort of competition or giveaway. For, for your fans in LA to go see the film on, and the week after the, your fans in London or somewhere in the UK can also go see it. Yeah, that's that'd be great. So Gabriel.movie, that's pretty yes. cool. Yeah, well, I, I didn't know I, when we were, of course, Gabriel.com was not available or Gabriel. Right. And, and then the, when we were registered domain, the system suggested, oh, do you want Gabriel.movie? And I thought, oh, nice. Uh, I didn't know there was a dot .movie um, extension, but it's good. So it's easy to memorize. I just put it up on the screen. Gabriel.movie. Yeah. That's a really cool one. Yeah, I have a bunch of domain names. <laughs> I got to keep track of which, what time they, re, you know, they renew every all the time and make sure that they, I keep yeah. them active. But FCP oh, Radio is the main one. So when I go to the summit, most, like right now, like I said, you're streaming on fcpradio.com right now. I'll put up the 
latest live stream right on the main page. People can go there. They can go on Twitter. They can go on Facebook. They can go on mm-hmm. Periscope, whatever they like. Fantastic, Nuno. I really yes. appreciate you coming on. No. Thank you for the invitation, and it's always a pleasure to talk to you. And uh, I'll be looking forward for the updates from the Final Cut Summit. Absolutely, uh, absolutely. Hopefully, you have to follow hopefully we have good news. Have good news from from Apple and the Final Cut Pro team. I got faith. I got <laughs> yeah. faith in Apple. Let's have faith. Let's have faith. <laughs> very good, Nuno. Thank you very much. Talk to Appreciate you later. It. See you. Bye-bye. Bye bye.